Hi everybody, Kate Haley here, a photographer and photo educator based in the Pacific Northwest. Um, hope you're all having a great day today. Um, and continuing with a little YouTube series here, I wanna just talk about different topics that I love in photography and um, share a few tips with you along the way. So today I thought it would be really cool to talk about a more creative technique called intentional camera movement. But before that, I want to tell you a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in a really artistic household. My dad was into photography. He was also a musician. My mom is a painter, fine art painter, who did a lot of work that was very abstract, like big canvases, abstract artwork. And um, so I've always felt inspired about all of these different creative avenues. Now, one thing you might not know about me is I spent a lot of my childhood singing and playing music. I even went to a performing arts high school. Um, I sang, I played clarinet, I learned a variety of instruments on top of that. Um, I even traveled and got to perform, you know, in different places around the country. And even um, my first trip to London was in high school to perform in different cathedrals in London and Cardiff, Wales. So I have this background in music and I will always love music and I do love working with creatives in general in my own photography. Um, but like the artistic side of things has always kind of been there for me. A desire to paint has always been there for me because I've been so inspired by the paintings that my mom would make and other artists that I've known in my life. And um, but I really, I guess, found my calling as a photographer, at least I hope so. <laughs> um, and I, you know, in photography, I love creating portraits of people. Um, I also love trying different techniques and experimenting in things like creating abstraction in a still image or creating movement in a still image. You know, how can we do that? You know, today we do a lot more video. Um, but for me, I'm a still photographer at heart. So I'm always trying to play around with how can I add a sense of movement into an image and intentional camera movement is one of the ways that we can do that. Um, really intentional camera movement is going to get you to try doing things that you've been told, oh, don't do that. For instance, um, when we work with a slower shutter speed, we're told, oh, it must be on a tripod. Well, yes, for certain applications, it definitely needs to be on a tripod, your camera. Um, but for intentional camera movement, a tripod is actually a hindrance. So for this technique, we're going to do handheld slow exposures to create either a sense of movement or a sense of motion blur. Now, sometimes this can be done with street photography. Uh, for instance, I was in Paris a few years back and was just walking around the city and um, with my X-T4, but I'm going to show you my X100V because I'm recording this video on my X-T4. Um, but walking around handheld, I pushed my ISO up to about 800 because I was doing some shots at night and then had my aperture, I think, get around f2.8. And then I was able to get my shutter speed down to about a quarter of a second or an eighth of a second and was just doing some handheld street photos at about that shutter speed. And what that got me was a sense of movement in the scene of, of people who were walking through a scene. Now those shutter speeds sound a little scary, right? A quarter of a second, a 15th of a second, an eighth of a second, because you're like, well, my hand's not super steady. I might have a little bit of blur and that's okay. This is totally about experimentation. Those numbers, like a quarter of a second, eighth of a second, 15th of a second, those will be good starting numbers for you to play with and then tweak from there. You could find that a 15th of a second is too slow and you have too much movement. So maybe you make it a 30th of a second. Do you want a hint of movement? Do you want more movement? So that's like one thing to consider. Um, now you might be like, but what if I want to play with that number, but it's still a little too blurry? There are things that you can do to kind of stabilize your camera a little bit. Um, and one of them is to kind of bring your camera into your body, um, hold it a little bit closer to you. If you have a camera strap on, which I don't right now, um, but you could shorten the camera strap. I love the Peak Design straps, like the leash strap is great for this particular camera. 
But if I shorten that and have like just a little extension from my body here, that can help stabilize your camera. Now, if you're on something like an X-T4 or X-T5 or X-S10, guess what? You have image, in-body image stabilization. So that will help with some of that motion blur that can happen. Um, so anyhow, getting back to it, essential part of this tip is try and shoot handheld at a slightly slower shutter speed. All right, the second thing that you would want to consider doing is moving the camera while the shutter is open. Now for this, I wanna be at probably half a second to start. The idea being that if I'm trying to create movement of a non-moving subject, like a building, like the Space Needle, for instance, instance here in Seattle, um, I might go to a half a second or one second on my camera and then hold this and then move my camera just a little to see what happens. And so just slight movements. So if it's a one second exposure, I might try and hold it for half a second and then do a little movement. And that's gonna twist the building this way or that way. Another technique is maybe try for one or two seconds, hold for half of that exposure and then do like this, like this for the other part of it. The longer you hold steady, it will kind of imprint a base layer of your subject. Okay, and then those little micro movements will create a little sense of blur or kind of give you a ghost kind of layer on top of that. Okay, so we have a couple things to remember. All right, try a slower shutter speed handheld and see what kind of movement happens if you have a moving subject. All right, um, but really the intentional camera movement comes in when you're moving your camera or your lens. So you have a zoom lens on your camera you could zoom in or out at one second. How does that change the photo? Okay. Now, bonus tip. If you try and do this technique during the day, you're probably going to need a neutral density filter. I'm gonna recommend at least a six stop neutral density filter. That's gonna take six stops of light away and make it easier for you to get to something like a one second exposure, okay? I typically have a 10 stop filter in my bag. Um, that's gonna take a lot more light away. It totally, totally helps though. All right, so wrapping this up, what we've talked about today, try slower shutter speed, try moving your camera or your lens while the shutter is open to see what kind of abstraction you can create in a photograph in a moving subject, in a non-moving subject. Take it out for a spin, try it, and let me know what you think. If you have additional questions about this technique, feel free to let me know in the comments. And thanks, have a great day.